Welcome back to our course on SAP production planning. In this session, we are going to discuss about load sizing procedures, how they are working for MRP and how it is being used in Material Master. So what we discussed so far, uh, production planning in business and SAP, different production types and what is the organization structure in SAP, overview of master data for SAP PP, then basic and purchasing views. In MRP1, we discussed MRP group, MRP type, reorder point, and how to calculate it automatically, planning time fence, planning cycle, and MRP controller. Now we will see what is the lot size. Lot size is the one which used to define what are the number of the proposals like a planned order or purchase requisitions to be created and how much quantity to be created for each proposal. That is the purpose of having this lot size. For the lot size, for sorry, for the system to create the lot size properly, it looks other information like how much safety stock is maintained, what is the maximum minimum lot size, what is the scrap percentage defined, what are the rounding value. All these parameters we'll discuss later. But system consider these parameters in calculating the lot size. It is important to determine the right lot size from business point of view. It is very important to define the lot size, to optimize inventory and ensure good service level. Because the supply chain team needs smaller lot sizes to reduce the storage cost and increase the flexibility. The production team needs higher lot sizes to increase efficiency and capacity utilization. The procurement team needs higher lot size to have quality discounts per order. How? When the lot size is more, the setup cost will be distributed well and the cost per unit will come down so manufacturing will try to have more lot size and also the efficiency of production will increase due to the long run capacity utilization of machine will be better so manufacturing team will need big lot sizes right is it obvious right and the procurement similarly right when they place orders with higher lot sizes like you know, instead of placing numbers 100 as an order if they place 1000 they can get good discount right so the procurement cost per unit will come down. So they will get a good you know, efficiency from the procurement point of view. So they need higher lot size. But at the same time, when you have the big lot size, what is happening? If you take a production for one item with a big lot size, you are not able to change to other product. So your lead time will automatically increase, right? Please think uh, this is something different what we are thinking, okay? So when the lot size is bigger, for example, instead of producing one product for one hour, if you are producing it for 10 hours, the your lot lead time is 10 hours now, right? So you are not able to have some flexibility or changing. So the higher lot size increases the lead time of the material and also it increases the inventory, right? And the flexibility. So when you are having this much big lot size, instead of producing 10, 10, 10 per lot, if you produce 100 or 1000 per lot, then what is the raw material you use? It is already cut or machined or processed and that is not available for some other product, right? So flexibility is lost. And also you're not able to change over to some other product if there is some urgent requirement. So flexibility is lost. So when you are having big losses, flexibility is lost. When your losses is bigger, lead time is lost. So from manufacturing and procurement point of view, higher losses is better. At the same time, from lead time and flexibility point of view, and also to improve the customer service, you know, quick service, and also to have better flexibility in the supply chain, having lower lot size is always better. So this is again a trade-off between higher lot size and lower lot size. So in SAP, there are familiar, there are two kind of lot sizes that are there. One is the static lot size, other is the periodic lot size. So in static lot size, we have lot for lot, pixel lot size, pixel lot size with splitting, uh, replenishment to maximum stock level. And for periodic lot size, we have a daily lot size or weekly lot size or monthly lot size like that. And there are also other lot size called optimizing lot size. Optimizing lot size means they will consider what is the cost, you know, what is the least cost, what is the dynamic lot size, like that it will take. And uh, using uh, optimizing lot size is little bit you know, cost oriented other things. So now let us focus on the static lot size, periodic lot size. Even if you use these two lot sizes properly, that will be good enough for the organization. So we'll see with some example now how these uh, proposals are split based on the lot size. Let us take a proposal which is having a requirement of 40 number and you know, maybe in a one day one and then 40 number next day, then 70 numbers next day. 
If it is exact lot size, what will happen? System will create a planned order for 40 for first proposal, 40 for second proposal, 70 for third proposal. If the lot size is 50, because you mentioned, mentioned this lot size is 50, instead of requirement 40, the first time system produce, proposes 50 lot size, right? And then the second time also, because though it is 40 requirement, system will propose 50. At the same time, when the MRP is running, system will consider, right, already for a requirement of 80, there is a proposal of 100. So it will keep always in mind. It doesn't going to be uh, infinitely very high. So in the third period, when the requirement is 70, so planned order will be created for 50 only because here requirement is total is 150, requirement also 150. So here the planned order is reduced, right? So this way is one way. This is the one uh, uh, way of seeing it. At the same time, if the lot size is 45, what will happen? So requirement is 40 here, the planned order is proposed 45. Requirement is 40, again planned order is 45. Then for the requirement of 70, when the planned order is 45 created, your total requirement is 45 plus 45 plus 45. It's 135 only, but your total requirement is 150. So system create another 45, okay? So when the fixed lot size is reduced, actually you are procuring more, right? So these behaviors we need to understand clearly. Both the business users and the uh, consultants should understand that uh, putting the lot size in a different uh, ways, you know, that they are all creating in different ways. You know, that how they behave, that's what very important to understand. So here, so though our total requirement is 150 in this three period, total proposal is 90 plus 90, 180. Though the fixed lot size is less than this 50, okay. So it may be surprised, you know, when the lot size is reduced, how the requirement is increasing. This is the the logic. And when you have the periodic lot size, like you know, uh, you have a weekly lot size or monthly lot size. If the, all these things are you no know, day one of one week, day two of another week, day three of another week, in week beginning itself, totally 150 numbers will come. If you take, uh, if it is a two three weeks, if it is a monthly, means month beginning itself will have 150. So when you are increasing the lot size, periodic lot size from daily to weekly to monthly, you are going to buy a bulk quantity of materials in the period beginning itself. So we have to be careful. That's why here we highlighted this one in the, you know, the red, uh, red color here. Because uh, this is going to increase your stock. And here also you are going to advance, you are going to procure in advance this much quantity. So it is also going to increase your stock. So be careful when you are defining the lot sizes. And also we have to keep on reviewing the lot size when it is used in the system. And now we saw that example, right? That 45 plus 45, which was creating 90, which is increasing the stock. At the same time, to avoid simultaneous scheduling of these quantities, no? now instead of 45 and 45, at the same time if it is proposing, if it is split that 45 in one period and 45 in another period, that will be better for us, right? So that also there is a possibility. We can use a lot size called FS, which is the fixer and the split lot size. This is again, we have to configure or we have to customize this. How to customize this, I will show it later, right? So here are these uh, uh, fixed lot size and you have to give what is the fixed lot size quantity. And uh, it is that one period, right? That we have to split it and the quantity is 45. So which means the system will propose that instead of having 45 and 45 in the same period, it will split and 45 in the uh, backward direction. We can customize this in this uh, lot size. It, it has to be given in the later stage also. That is also option there. So means at the same time, you don't get 90, but you split it and get it. So that you can have the flexibility to control the, the procurement what you are doing it. So the customization, right? So this is the path you now from production, go to metal requirement planning, in planning, go to the lot sizing procedure. There you find a lot of lot sizes. Then there are a lot of standard lot sizes available that should be sufficient to meet the business requirements. But if you want to do some customization of specific requirement, you can do this with this customization path. And okay, in this uh, session, we discuss about uh, lot sizing procedure and the impact of lot sizing business in different uh, stakeholders. And um, since the lot size plays major role in controlling inventory at optimized level, so that you don't increase inventory value and also improve the customer service, it is better to maintain the uh, inventory and the lot size is one of the key parameters to control the inventory. And for users, it is suggested to practice different lot sizes, understand them well, and apply in your business scenarios. 
and for consultants to add value to the business they can configure different kind of lot sizes and also discuss with the business users so which kind of scenario will be better for them right so they can propose it and they can add value to the business okay right in the next session we will discuss the other attributes and lot size like uh, minimum lot size maximum lot size in the maximum stock level rounding value those things we will discuss in the next session now please give your feedback to improve the flow and contents and also please uh, subscribe to our channel and uh, uh, you know encourage your friends and colleagues to become uh, subscribers to our channel so that these kind of uh, knowledge sharing will continue okay and also please visit our website www.begrowin.com to understand other uh, related uh, Uh, things like uh, certifications and supply chain you can understand that thank you all see you in the next session